in Middleton, Wisconsin, an MSI auto sales employee died in a shooting involving a patron on March the 20th of 2023. According to court records, the 23-year-old shooter, Jakira Anderson, went to the auto dealership on East Wisconsin Street to complain about a car she'd recently leased. She apparently got into an argument with one of the staff members, Korsu Samba. Officers responded to reports of a disturbance at approximately 1.30 p.m., whereupon they found the 34-year-old employee with critical gunshot wounds. Samba was rushed to the hospital, but medics were unable to save him. A few hours later, the suspect was arrested and charged with first-degree intentional homicide. She told the police that she was simply trying to scare the victim and didn't think she was going to hit him when she fired her gun. Two days later, in Dane County Circuit Court, her bond was set at $1 million. The victim's wife said that she was devastated by her loss. Number 15. Daniel Willis Taylor in 2018, a 62-year-old woman entered a McDonald's in St. Petersburg, Florida, and witnessed 40-year-old Daniel Willis Taylor lashing out at a crew member over new plastic straw legislation. The incident, which took place on New Year's Eve, began shortly after Taylor had gotten his order. When he couldn't find any plastic straws at the condiment station, he returned to the counter, scolded employees for not doing their jobs. 20-year-old Yasmin James, who was working the register, reportedly told Taylor that they weren't permitted to have plastic straws in the lobby, but that he could get one upon request. A glimpse of the heated confrontation was captured on camera by the witness as Taylor reached across the counter and grabbed James by the shirt. The young woman then repeatedly punched her attacker, prompting other crew members to step in to defuse the situation. While the man was escorted out, he kicked another employee in the stomach, according to police. The witness provided a statement to officers along with her video recording of the incident. In the aftermath, Taylor called law enforcement to report that he'd been hit in the head by the McDonald's worker. When officers arrived at his location, he was recognized from the video and arrested. In March of 2019, Taylor, who was listed as a transient in court documents, pleaded no contest to two counts of battery. He was consequently sentenced to 60 days in detention. 58 of which he'd already served in Pinellas County Jail. Taylor was ordered to stay away from the fast food establishment and the two women involved. He also needed to pay a $1,000 fine or perform 120 hours of community service. Number 14. Serena Howell A McDonald's worker with epilepsy was attacked by a female patron for taking too long to cook bacon on December the 27th of 2019. The incident unfolded at the prominent chain's location in Greenfield, Wisconsin. The unnamed customer was irritated after waiting approximately eight minutes to receive her order. She approached a teenage employee named Serena Howell and confronted her about the wait time. The situation subsequently escalated as profanities were exchanged between the two. The customer then went around the counter and physically assaulted Howell. After throwing a punch, the woman yanked the teen's hair, then threw her to the ground. Cell phone video obtained by local police showed the victim on the floor with her hands over her face. During the attack, the patron fled the scene before law enforcement arrived. The victim's mother rushed to the restaurant near Highway 100 and Layton Avenue. After learning about what had happened, she told Fox 6 that the attack was particularly scary because her daughter could have suffered a seizure as a result. The suspect, who was with another person at the time, was issued a refund for the food she never received. As of the latest updates, no arrests had been made, but Howell had quit her job at McDonald's. Number 13. Quinasha Thompson On the evening of October the 19th, of 2021, a request for a refund at a Dairy Queen in College Station, Texas, ended with violence and an arrest. 28-year-old Quinasha Thompson asked for the refund after she'd allegedly received a watery soft serve ice cream. The woman later said that the Dairy Queen worker started to laugh and make fun of her before the situation escalated. She claimed that one of the workers dared her to pull her car out of the drive through line and catch these hands. When she pulled around, the employees attempted to take pictures of her car and license plate. Two workers subsequently got struck by the vehicle. 
After Thompson drove her car towards the entrance door, both of the victims suffered leg injuries. The incident was captured by the restaurant's surveillance cameras, which helped authorities confirm what had transpired. Thompson was arrested and charged with two counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. She was jailed on a $30,000 bond. According to a probable cause statement from police, Thompson claimed that she was initially going to fight the first employee, but when multiple staff members came outside, she became frightened and tried to stop them by pinning the door shut with her vehicle. Number 12. Viral McDonald's Argument A customer was kicked out of a McDonald's drive through in the US after he repeatedly asked workers to remake his drink. The man reportedly informed a female staff member that he didn't think there was enough flavoring in the drink he ordered. He was subsequently told to go to a different store because they wouldn't serve him anymore. He asked why he was being denied service, to which the worker responded by claiming that he'd been given multiple drinks, all of which were apparently unsatisfactory. She said if the restaurant couldn't satisfy him the first time, then they were done trying. The man recorded the interaction, which ended up going viral on TikTok in the summer of 2022. The video ended as the man was leaving while the woman said he called her vulgar names. There were two versions of the video, both of which garnered more than 700,000 likes and over 10,000 comments, with many commending the staff's handling of the situation. Number 11. McDonald's Brawl on November the 18th of 2019, the Daily Mail released an article about a McDonald's patron who got beaten up by two of the store's employees. Video footage of the incident was uploaded online in the aftermath. A male customer was shown getting into an argument with a worker before entering the food service area behind the counter. A fistfight then ensued. Another crew member tried to stop the violence by dragging his co-worker away, at which point he was punched by the patron. The two male employees subsequently started beating the customer, kicking and punching him as he lay on the floor defenseless. The victim was then seen holding his hands up as he got up off the ground, but one of the workers delivered three more punches anyway. The customer left, his white sleeveless shirt having been torn on one side. The video ended as the aggressive employee was being carried away by other McDonald's workers. Number 10. Jesse Lynn Hayden Deputy Pickerel of the Charles County Sheriff's Office in Maryland responded to a Hooters in Waldorf on January the 1st of 2019. Upon the officer's arrival at the bar at approximately 3.15 p.m., the manager of the establishment said that one of their customers, Jesse Lynn Hayden, had been kissing random women on the cheek and cussing men out. She added that the 38-year-old appeared already intoxicated when she arrived and had consumed two or three liquor shots in the restaurant. The deputy then saw the woman walk over to a male customer, shove him and shout profanities at him in an attempt to place her under arrest. The officer grabbed her hand while pushing her up against a bar stool. He told her to quiet down as the woman yelled at him to get off of her and kicked him in the knee twice. She tried to pull her hands away before another customer assisted the deputy in restraining her. She was then escorted out to a police car and taken to the Charles County Detention Center, where she was charged with second degree assault resisting arrest, intoxicated public disturbance, failure to obey a lawful order, peace disturbance, and disorderly conduct. Number 9. Lori Desjardins A Southington woman was arrested on September the 16th of 2021 for attacking a member of the U.S. Navy at Central Pizza in Berlin, Connecticut. The incident, which happened five days prior on the 20th anniversary of 9-11, was captured on camera. After getting her food at around 9.45 p.m., 45-year-old Laurie Desjardins started berating a Navy sailor, Sean Nolte Jr., claiming he was impersonating a service member. Officials would later confirm that Nolte was indeed a sailor, training at the Naval Submarine School in Groton. According to the victim's Facebook post, when he showed the woman his military ID, she insisted that it was fake. She then showed her dependent's military ID, which she said was what the military man's card should look like. She went on to say that the man was a disgrace to the United States of America. Desjardins also said she was disgusted by Nolte before slapping him 
The video went viral, but the woman wasn't identified until she turned herself into the police headquarters and was served with an active arrest warrant. One count of third degree assault and one count of second degree breach of peace were levied against Desjardins. She reportedly told police that she'd been dealing with ongoing mental health issues as well as a problem with alcohol. She was released on a $10,000 bond. In the aftermath, CVS Health, her employer, confirmed her termination. She was initially scheduled to appear in New Britain Superior Court on September the 23rd, but the hearing was postponed until the following month. Number 8. Natalia Harrell After partying in the Overtown neighborhood of Miami, Florida, Natalia Harrell and her friends ended their night and ordered an Uber on July the 23rd of 2022. While they'd been partying earlier, 24-year-old Harrell texted one of their friends to get another friend, Gladys Yvette Borcella, under control after she saw her drinking and dancing. According to a witness, Borcella's behavior had made Harrell upset. When the Uber arrived, the group, which was composed of three men and three women, got into the driver's Cadillac Escalade. Harrell and Borcella, aged 28, sat in the third row. According to one of the passengers, the two began to argue, calling each other names. When Borcella stood up, Harrell pulled a gun and shot her, hitting her torso and left arm. The Uber driver immediately pulled over and the other passengers fled on foot. The victim was taken to Jackson Ryder Trauma Center, where she was later pronounced dead. Harrell was arrested three days later, on July the 26th, and was facing a second-degree murder charge. She was held at the Miami-Dade jail without bond. According to court documents, a petition for Harrell's release was requested by her attorney, who claimed that because his client was pregnant, her unborn child was being unlawfully detained. The petition was denied in February of 2023. Two months later, the woman gave birth and the baby was placed in the care of relatives. Harrell was scheduled to appear in court in September of 2023. She was facing a maximum sentence of life in prison and a $10,000 fine. Number 7. Samantha Clark A manager at the Big Five Sporting Goods store in Modesto, California, was attacked while working on May the 6th of 2020. Despite the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the store was still in operation after being deemed an essential business. On the day in question, a woman called to inquire about an item's availability. The store could only hold the item for half an hour, meaning the customer wouldn't be able to get it, which reportedly upset her. The store manager, Samantha Clark, who had worked in retail sales for 17 years, claimed that the woman arrived and started grabbing things off the counter and tossing them around. A metal object struck Clark in the face, after which the suspect left the store. Her identity wasn't able to be determined due to a black face mask she'd worn in accordance with health and safety guidelines in place at the time. After the attack, the victim shared photos of her bloody face on social media. Number 6. Natasha Ethel Bagley and Genesis Peguero Two Florida women assaulted an employee at a Miami Burger King on April the 2nd of 2019 after their attempt to get free food was thwarted. The two customers, Natasha Bagley and Genesis Peguero, pulled into the fast food restaurant's drive through located on South Dixie Highway at around 5 p.m. The women asked if they could get free fries with their order but were refused. They went inside, claiming that one of the employees had called them a derogatory name, as the Miami Herald reported. 27-year-old Peguero jumped over the counter and demanded the cash register be opened after the store supervisor came out of her office to assess the situation. According to law enforcement, she told the manager to give her the money, threatening to hit her with a pistol. She then snatched the store's phone out of the supervisor's grasp as she attempted to call the police. Peguero punched the woman which was when 42-year-old Bagley joined in the assault. Peguero proceeded to rip the registers and point-of-sale monitors from the counters before the pair left in a black SUV. Bagley was apprehended on May the 27th, almost two months from the incident. According to a Miami-Dade police report, her charges included armed robbery with assault, criminal mischief, and attempted robbery with a deadly weapon. The Hylia woman reportedly had a lengthy criminal history. She was held without bond while Peguero was still at large. Number 5. Richelle Marie Williams On May the 26th of 2021, 
33-year-old Richelle Marie Williams went ballistic inside a Jersey Mike's in Hemet, California. After an employee allegedly got her order wrong, Williams stole a tip jar and grabbed several food items. When the staff attempted to stop her, she assaulted a teenage employee, then fled. Williams was identified as the perpetrator after authorities gathered evidence at the scene. Following a traffic stop in the 800 block of State Street at around 5 p.m. on June the 1st, the suspect was arrested. She was booked into the Riverside County Jail on a $30,000 bond. She was charged with second-degree robbery and second-degree burglary. Number 4. Heather Nicole Hirsch A 35-year-old woman was arrested on the night of February the 16th of 2021 following an intoxicated outburst at a Longhorn Steakhouse in Lady Lake, Florida. After finishing her meal, Heather Nicole Hirsch of Leesburg walked around the restaurant without her shoes on, asking other diners for cigarettes. When the police subsequently arrived at the scene, they reportedly found Hirsch still behaving erratically. The manager of the establishment told officers that they just wanted the woman to leave, even though she hadn't paid her nearly $50 bill yet. When Hirsch refused to leave, she was arrested and booked at the Lake County Jail on a $1,000 bond. She was charged with disorderly intoxication and disorderly conduct. In 2023, Hirsch was taken to the Lifestream Behavioral Center, which offers psychiatric services, after she was arrested again for stealing items from a couple. She refused to return what she'd stolen, saying that God had given them to her. Number 3. George Van Der Waal Jr. and Shania Meechling Police officers were called to the Family Dollar Store in Warren, Ohio on the afternoon of March the 2nd of 2021. According to witness testimony, a disagreement between two customers had ensued after George Van Der Waal Jr. was asked by another man to observe social distancing. After allegedly pointed a gun at the other patron, Van Der Waal told the man that he'd wait for him outside the store. When law enforcement arrived, they located the 34-year-old suspect walking along Ward Street with Shania Meechling aged 22. A loaded 32 caliber handgun was found in the pocket of the man's hoodie, while a Beretta 22 LR was found in the young woman's pocket. They also discovered 36 rounds of ammunition in two separate bags. The pair were booked into the Trumbull County Jail on charges of carrying a concealed weapon. Van der Waal told authorities that both guns belonged to him, according to an arrest affidavit. Meechling was thus released from custody and wasn't ultimately charged. In July of 2021, Van der Waal pleaded guilty to a charge of being a felon in possession of a firearm and was sentenced to three years in federal prison on January the 6th of 2022. Today's topic was requested by Kai Meraga. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Moon Delhi Fight Authorities were trying to identify a man accused of attacking an employee at a New York City deli on June the 28th of 2021. It happened at the Moon Deli on Atlantic Avenue in the bed neighborhood of Brooklyn at around 8.15 in the morning. The man in question got into a dispute with a 23-year-old male employee. A surveillance video published by CBS New York showed the situation eventually escalated. The suspect removed his footwear and punches were exchanged between him and the worker. Another man tried to stop the fight, but the employee was subsequently sliced on the back and neck by the suspect with a knife. The victim was then taken to a local hospital in stable condition. The man who cut him had run away before law enforcement arrived at the scene. The NYPD's Crime Stoppers released video footage of the individual responsible and asked the public for help in identifying him. We have seven more cases of bad clients from a previous video lined up of people who went after their lawyers. Stay tuned if you'd like. Number 1. Kyle Curtis Kelly Police in Kirksville, Missouri were called to a McDonald's on April the 30th of 2021 after an allegedly irate customer threatened to kill the entire staff. Kyle Curtis Kelly walked into the fast food restaurant loudly yelling that he wanted his food. The 33-year-old reportedly used profanities while shouting at employees. The shift manager told authorities that he attempted to address the issue, but the man kept shouting, threatening to kill everyone if he didn't get his food. 
Subsequently, Kelly went behind the counter and reportedly body-checked the manager and backed a teenage crew member into a corner before yelling and cussing at her, according to the team. As the suspect was walking away, he shoved another employee, then finally left the premises. Kelly was arrested and jailed without bond in the Adair County Law Enforcement Center. In July of 2021, he was charged with second-degree making threats, second-degree harassment, and two counts of fourth-degree assault. Number 7. David Chiselton On February the 19th of 2019, David Chiselton was standing before a judge in Cuyahoga County, Ohio, to be sentenced after he'd pleaded guilty to a number of charges. Two years prior, Chiselton had been responsible for a police standoff lasting several hours after an incident in which he'd struck his girlfriend with a pistol and set his apartment complex on fire. By 2019, he'd admitted, among others, domestic abuse, aggravated arson, and felonious assault. During the hearing, he found out that he was being sentenced to 47 years in prison. Chiselton then punched his defense lawyer, Aaron Brockler, who was standing next to him. The attack was captured by the body cams of deputies present in the courthouse and witnessed by a room full of legal representatives. Medical records indicated that Brockler had suffered two hairline fractures of his nose and a sprained MCL. In spite of insurmountable evidence, the ensuing felonious assault charge against Chiselton was dismissed in October of that same year. His new lawyer, Jim Jenkins, successfully argued that the injuries hadn't inflicted the level of physical harm necessary to meet the charge. Jenkins told the court, David Chiselton doesn't pack much of a punch, before turning to his client and saying, I love you, but you don't pack much of a punch. Chiselton took the stand and alleged that Brockler had banked on his friendship with the judge's husband to ensure that he'd be getting a sentence close to the minimum of nine years. He admitted to punching him out of rage upon finding out he was getting 47. Chiselton applauded the jury, who found him not guilty before heading back to jail. In 2021, Brockler filed a lawsuit against him, as well as the two deputies who'd handcuffed him for restraining his hands at the front instead of behind his back, as it was the department's policy. Number 6. Nando Perez a custodian working at the Queen's office of New York City lawyer, Charles Zolot, found him dead on the floor on the morning of August the 5th of 2022. Zolot had been stabbed multiple times and had suffered trauma to his back. The 65-year-old handled bankruptcy, real estate, and all areas of family law. Another lawyer working in the same building told CBS New York that his legal assistants had reported overhearing a heated argument at around closing time. On August the 4th, Zollert's lifeless body was found by cleaning staff the following day. An investigation was launched by law enforcement, and his killer was identified as 54-year-old Bronx man Nando Perez. He was confirmed by the NYPD to have been a disgruntled client of Zollert's. The authorities provided no further details, but there was suspicion that Perez was angry over how the lawyer had handled the foreclosure of his home. Five days after Zolot's body was found, Perez was arraigned on charges of second-degree murder and criminal possession of a weapon in the fourth degree. The man's brother was believed to have been in a room as well, but the extent of his involvement in the killing, if any, remained unspecified. Number 5. Lamont Payne Lamont Payne, a man with a long history of assault and disruptive behavior, was in court in 2018 for attacking a corrections officer at the 4th Avenue Jail in Maricopa County, Arizona. The incident, which had occurred in 2016, involved him blocking out the windows of his cell and placing soapy water on the floor to make it difficult for guards to remove him. He then got on the ground as they entered and bit into a guard's ankle, causing a laceration. While in court for the attack, Payne was assigned public defender Vladimir Gagic. During the first day of jury selection, Payne attempted to fire him and repeatedly disrupted the proceedings. He was seen trying to get his lawyer's attention by banging on his desk, but Gagic seemingly ignored him. Payne disregarded the judge's warnings and was eventually ordered to be removed from court. In a video-recorded incident, 
He got up and started collecting some papers, then forcefully sucker-punched Gagic in the face and cursed at him. Pain was restrained by a deputy as Gagic rose to his feet shaken up by the strike. He was left with a bloody nose and mouth, subsequently telling the media, I could literally taste his knuckles. He filed assault charges against Payne. While stunned by the attack, Gagic later reported that he was more upset with the manner in which the public defense services had treated him in the aftermath. They suspended his contract and asked him to repay the $1,000 he'd been given to defend Payne, citing multiple complaints about his lack of communication with clients, another attorney, and PDS. Number 4. Peter Hafer In June of 2007, Peter Hafer and an accomplice burglarized the Kmart in Kentucky, making off with over $50,000 in jewelry. He was arrested in August and in February of the following year, appeared in Scott County Circuit Court. 30-year-old Hafer's court-appointed lawyer was a man by the name of Doug Crickmer during the hearing. Hafer told the court that he was dissatisfied with Crickmer's services and asked for a new lawyer, but was denied with a judge telling him that he couldn't choose his public defender. Looking back on what followed, Hafer would claim, I just couldn't take it anymore and I just snapped. As Crickmer began explaining his side of the argument, Hafer threw a haymaker to his chin that dropped him to the floor. The inmate was able to land a few more blows to Crickmer's head and stomach as deputies struggled to contain him. The lawyer was taken to a local hospital, but released later that same day. In a subsequent interview for a media outlet, Crickmer bore the marks of his client's attack, which included two black eyes. He, however, stated that he understood Hafer's frustration and didn't blame him, adding that he wasn't planning to pursue assault charges. The incident ultimately worked in Hafer's favor as he was appointed a new lawyer. Number 3. Lamarcus Williamson After pleading guilty to robbery, drug and assault charges, Lamarcus Williamson was about to be sentenced in early October of 2012 at court in York County, South Carolina. He had a lengthy prison record dating back to 2000 and had been arrested most recently in March for choking a female Winthrop University student. At the time, the police also found nine grams of crack cocaine on him. Attorney Dan Hall was sitting next to Williamson as his punishment was read out. It was the legal representative's 58th birthday and only the second time he'd worked with Williamson as he was reportedly standing in for a colleague. 30-year-old Williamson reacted in disbelief when his sentence of 15 years was read out. Two deputies moved closer to him as the inmate became increasingly agitated. Surveillance video from the crowded courtroom showed Hall touching Williamson's shoulder and pointing to the door, seemingly suggesting they leave. Within moments, Williamson violently lashed out and even though he was in handcuffs, punched the lawyer in the face. He tried to land further blows after Hall had collapsed, but deputies promptly intervened and hauled him out of the courtroom. He later offered a bizarre explanation for the punch, describing it as an angry reaction to his solicitor trying to incriminate him like he was some bad guy. Six months were added to his sentence, the harshest possible punishment for contempt of court. Hall was left with a bleeding lip and a sore jaw, but subsequently claimed that it could have been worse. He noted that if the blow had landed an inch higher, his nose would have been broken, and an inch lower, he would have lost his front teeth. Hall also joked that it wasn't the best birthday present he'd ever received. Number 2. Christchurch District Court Incident In late November of 2019, New Zealand lawyer Tony Gregg was representing a high-security prisoner who was not named at the Christchurch District Court. The offender had been charged with assaulting a prison officer. As the hearing progressed, the judge asked him to go back to the docks for sentencing. The man got up and suddenly delivered a powerful blow to Greg's head that blindsided him and sent him flying from his chair and onto the floor. The offender was restrained by three corrections officers and subsequently returned to prison. It wasn't made immediately clear if he faced new charges or if time was added to his sentence. Greg was taken to a nurse at the justice precinct who stitched up a cut on his brow. 
Greg described the attack as sudden but unavoidable, noting that if a client was dissatisfied with their attorney and wanted to hurt them, they had plenty of opportunities to do so. Greg returned to work unshaken by the attack and in spite of the fact that it had left him with stitches and bruising to his face. Number 1. Joshua Monson In May of 2011, Washington man Joshua Monson was in Snohomish County Court for second-degree murder and felony drug possession. During a hearing for the latter charge, 27-year-old Monson grabbed a pencil and stabbed his lawyer, Thomas Cox, in the neck. Cox wasn't seriously hurt and opted to stay on as Monson's attorney, but was replaced by Gurjit Pandir. A few days after the hearing, Monson appeared in court again via video conference from jail. During the proceedings, he stabbed Pandir with a small jailhouse pencil. Again, the lawyer avoided major injury and was replaced. Monson's mental health came into question, but he was found competent to stand trial. In late October, Monson was in court once more with his new legal representative, Jesse Cantor. He didn't have any access to sharp objects and was fitted with a stun cuff on his leg that could be activated by corrections officers and shock him in case of another outburst. The prosecution had argued that Monson should have had his legs restrained with leather shackles. Cantor, however, opposed them, arguing that they'd influenced the way in which the jurors regarded Monson and jeopardized his right to a fair trial. The judge agreed. Then, during the hearing, Monson moved to grab Cantor's pen. A corrections officer activated the stun cuff, but it failed to stop him. Monson stabbed his lawyer in the side of the head with the pen before he was subdued by officers. Much like those before him, Cantor emerged without significant injuries. The judge ruled that through his repeated attacks for which he was charged with two counts of fourth-degree assault, Monson had forfeited his right to legal counsel and would thus represent himself. He was also ordered to be restrained for the remainder of the trial. During a subsequent hearing, Monson urged the jury to keep an open mind, claimed that he was framed and that the police had misidentified the substance in his possession as methamphetamine when it was actually rock salt. After the jury left the courtroom to deliberate, a restrained Monson smiled at the prosecution and said, Congratulations! He was found guilty of drug possession and a few months later found guilty of murder. The second charge stemmed from an incident on January the 2nd of 2011. It was then that Monson was accused of shooting 30-year-old Brian Jones in the back of the head while he was talking on the cell phone at his Everett apartment. Monson was sentenced to 45 years in prison. Thanks for watching. Would you rather eat McDonald's every day or have to grow your own food? Let us know in the comments section below.